Hey, and Jay Will in the house. Jay Will was in Toronto last night, saw all the action, flew back overnight, so we're appreciative of that. And he's so appreciative that RJ wore his finest jewelry to accommodate yeah. you here. Got Respect. the championship ring work. Respect. Today. Yeah, that's what we're fighting for. Out Zoom here. in that's on that thing, man. No need for Zoom. We'll get enough action. Oh, there you go. No big You're not wearing that outside in the street, so you only wear no, that no, outside no, no, the no. studio. No, no, I can't. I can't. I like a ring I you can't. could land a plane on. All right, let's get this thing started. <laughs> Our game of the night, obviously, only one place to go, and that is Toronto. Raptors, the hosts, and you know who was ready. Jurassic Park was ready. You know who else was ready? Champagne Poppy. Oh, He's ready yeah. to go. He's Champagne got the Del Curry jersey and everything. All right, we're going to pick it up in the third quarter. How good was Pascal Siakam? He was amazing. He did everything that his team needed to do, especially with Kawhi being a little hobbled. But look, just outrunning, outrunning the Warriors and getting out to the lane right there. Toronto by seven after three. And then Fred Van Vliet. They needed to find something somewhere else last night, Jay, and he was the man who did it. After the birth of his second, his second child, he's really been playing extremely well. Four or four from the three-point line as well. Look at this sequence here. Now, he gets the bucket. Now, back we go the other way. And Serge Ibaka uh. playing defense. Great sequence for the Raptors who have a five-point lead. Later, their lead is seven. Siakam, uh. again. How does this one go? Well, you sometimes it's just better to be lucky than good. That's really all you can say. When you're 14 for 17 from the field, not all of them are going to be pretty. There's going to be a few lucky shots that drop like this next one for Danny Green. Welcome back, Danny Green. Welcome back. I'm not sure if that one was lucky. That's a nice feed. Green had 11, by the way. Later, it's an eight-point game. Kawhi Leonard, again, quiet. Only five shots from the floor last night, but those three of his 23 were big, and Toronto's lead was 11. Under four to go now. The Raptors' lead is 10. And again, you mentioned better lucky than good. Here we go. Here we go. Here. <laughs> Look at this. Off the wrong foot, glass, spin around, drop. It was just impressive. Jurassic Park was fired up just over a minute to go looking to put a punctuation. Siakam, no. Siakam, yes. You mentioned it. 14 of 17. 32 points for Pascal Siakam. And as they're walking off the floor, ooh, a little oh, nasty. Yeah. We got yeah. Drake. Drake's we got Draymond. Yeah. If you had the end of game one as what those two would exchange words, you had a winner last night. And the Raptors are up one zip. Had someone told you that in your very first NBA Finals game, you'd put up 32 points what would you have said to that person? Probably that it was crazy. Um, you know, uh, at that time, I don't even know if I really dreamed of, you know, being at this level. I think once I, I got to the point where I felt like I had a chance, um, I, I, I put everything, you know, forward and, and, and I just worked really hard and, you know, prepared for, for times like this. We're down 0 1, but it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, new experiences for us all the way through, but, you know, we've proven. Our resiliency and ability to win games that we need to and kind of answer the bell and learn from you know, nights like, like tonight. So on this night, Steph, Clay, uh, Steph and Clay excuse me, made 10 of 12 open shots, but combined to shoot just 26% on 23 attempts when contested by a Raptors defender and contested they were. So, okay, let's, let's talk about this here for a minute. Jay, Will, you were there in the building. Yep. So the three of us were together yesterday. If I had said to you yesterday, Steph and Clay are going to score 55, Draymond's going to have a triple-double, and Kawhi Leonard is only going to make five shots, would you have ever believed me if I had said Toronto was going to win the game? How did that happen? Well, first off, it's zero transition threes. You know, we were talking about this before we came on air. You always feel like Golden State can get back in the game. They get back in the game with these huge momentum threes off a turnover. Steph or Clay make a, a three. Next thing you know, they're back in the game because they go on a 6-0 run or a 6-2 run. Zero transition threes. So I thought that Toronto did a really good job of tagging these guys wherever they were at and forcing them to be two-point scores more so than making threes that allowed them to get back into the game. Yeah, and, the, and you look at the roster for the Toronto Raptors. Uh, Serge Ibaka has played against this Warriors team. Kawhi Leonard has. Danny Green has. So when they understand the urgency of how to get back and the principles that are needed to slow down the Golden State Warriors, I think the Toronto defense was impressive. And I, yeah, go ahead. I was just saying, so Greeny, you have to be able to tag guys. So you, I, I saw this multiple times between Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Vliet, Danny Green, or Kawhi. When the ball would go up, you would see them not go to attack the offensive board, but they would be trying to find exactly where Steph or Clay 
Clay was on the court to pick them up early, to meet them around half court or the full court instead of losing them in transition, which typically happens. Yeah, no, you, you look at this entire, look, all, all of these possessions here, they're just length and size. And look, the Warriors know how to knock these shots down, but they've had a nine, they've had a nine day layoff. Right, they're a little short-handed. Andre Iguodala obviously isn't himself right now, yep. and so it's just you look at all of those things combined, and that's how we got to this spot. Yeah, look, and the, to me, the biggest note that comes out of last night, or at least one of them, is that the Raptors win a game in which Kawhi Leonard does not take over. The one thing we all thought for certain was he's going to have to be great every single night for them to win. So what does it mean that they win a game in which he wasn't great last night? Well, look, 14 for 17. This is the, the, my biggest issue with the Warriors. And look, the, uh, the entire Toronto Raptors organization, you guys were amazing. Everyone, it was great. Great game plan, great defense, great execution. But now we're going to look at like what happened. And see, how come going 14 for 17 and only shooting two free throws means that there was really not a lot of resistance given by the Golden State Warriors. They, uh, Toronto shot 50% from the field, 40% from three. That's not going to get it done in the NBA Finals. He's got to put some respect on the Raptors' name. Yeah. They, had, they had to lead the whole game. damn game. Yeah. The whole game. No transition threes for Golden State. Yeah, the, the defense wasn't great, but we need to stop this narrative like they're better without Kevin Durant. Like we really do, because on those nights where uh, Andre Godala can't get going, or you got I, I love Quinn Cook, but Quinn Cook is playing solid minutes in the NBA Finals. Kevon Looney isn't really doing anything. Draymond Green is two of six from the field. Even though he got a triple double, he didn't play well. You need guys that can score the ball, and when you have the best scorer on the planet on your team, it makes everybody else's job easier. Now, so we're going to get to Durant in a second, but let's start by talking a little more about Siakam, and I'm going to show you just some more of what his magic was last night. Because here's a guy; he was the most improved player in the league this season. He was the best player on the court in his first ever NBA Finals game and he showed you the whole repertoire. This is third quarter action here. He's spinning and he's scoring giving the Raptors a 10 point lead three for three in that quarter. He really dominated the third which is usually Golden State's time. He personally was five for five in the third. He was and I heard a lot of Raptors fans say this last night and I've seen it the whole year. When he doesn't settle for just shooting threes and he attacks the rim, that's when he's at his best. Yeah and I, I look, Draymond got into it with Champagne Poppy. I, would, I, I thought I would never say this. I need to see more fight from Draymond. Yeah. Right? I need to see a little bit more. Hey, take this personally. Now, again, there were some plays that could have gone either way, but I think I need Draymond to be a lot more aggressive. Siakam, 14 of 17, 32 points in the win. It's bigger than basketball, and, and every, every night that I go out there, um, I have a bigger purpose, and, and, I, and I play for something bigger than this basketball, and, and I think that's what makes it special. Um, that every night I'm out there, you know, no matter the result, no matter how many points I score, you know, I'm, I'm playing for something bigger than myself. You know, I've heard, you know, a lot of people or him say some things this year and they keep saying, are you surprised? And he keeps saying, no, this is what I've always envisioned for myself. So I think that's a powerful statement he makes as well. He, he believes in himself and he went to work at it. You know, he, he's become a guy. And so, you know, you got to... Well, he put a lot of work in to get there, and, and I respect that. But like I said, uh, I got to take him out of this series, and that's on me. All right, you yeah. just said it. Respect. He just yeah. said it. Yeah. What's the adjustment there? What do they, I mean, Obviously, 82% from the floor doesn't happen every <laughs> single night, but yeah. he killed them last night. What do they have to do defensively? Well, you know, their game plan was, it was great. I actually liked the Warriors' game plan. They wanted the other guys to beat him, and the other guys did. But I think if you're like, okay, how can we build off of this? I need to see more aggression. I don't want this man to shoot two free throws and have 17 field goals and make 14 of them. One time, put him on his butt. One time, slap him across his hand. Some, one time, just do something. Foul him away from the ball. There's more things that you can do, and I'm not saying play dirty, but if you're not showing any resistance and it's just like ticky attack fouls, then you, he's going to be able to eat all night. I think you got to give him a lot of credit, though, Greeny, because as a young basketball player, I think he settled into taking a lot of threes, and one of the things that happened in transition, you saw Golden State as they're matching up. There were a lot of times Draymond wasn't on him. There was a smaller player on him, and for Pascal to recognize I have smaller players on me, I can drive, I can get you to the rim, I can punish you with those shots around the basket, that says a lot about his maturity as a player. Now he needs to sustain that in order for him to continue to win these games. And look, when the Warriors are playing small, this is where you see them yes. miss Kevin Durant, right? Because now Kevin Durant is seven feet tall with, with length. 
we, you saw there Siakam is bigger than everyone else on that small ball team for the Warriors. But when you have Kevin Durant, a six foot eleven guy with a seven foot five wingspan, he can come over and contest some of those shots. He can come over and block some of those shots or just give a little bit more resistance. So the Warriors have to make an adjustment just purely based off their lack of size. You know, all the conversation that we had leading up to this and as good as Golden State looked and all the attention we were paying to Milwaukee, the one thought that I kept having watching this game last night was, I think a lot of us, myself included, missed the boat on just how good Toronto is. You know, you don't. They were see favored in the game, Greeny. They, they were favored last night yes. in the game. But you watch it. Last night, it did not have the look of a fluke. Like, as the game was going on, it did not have the look of a surprise. It had the look of a team that can just stifle you defensively. They are, they, they are, that was a stifling, stifling defensive performance. And you look at it, they were down 0-2 to Milwaukee, right? So they're showing multiple different facets. Like, they can come back. They can lead the series. Like, they are showing a focus that it takes to be a champion, and that's why they're here right now, and you have to give them credit. It's only one game, but they're showing that, hey, this is going to be a series. And I'll say this, Steph is watching that game last night, and with that kind of length, Steph is the only guy, Grinny, yeah. that can do something off the dribble. Yeah, He's the only one that can get his own shot off the dribble, with the exception of Draymond. Draymond's a creator, but he has six turnovers. But, but again, the Warriors, they knew this. When you went – all superstars and limited bench. Yeah. You knew that the only thing that could possibly slow you down is injuries, and here they are dealing with injuries. You got Andre Godala that's that's hobbled. You got uh, Boogie Cousins that's just coming back, and there's really no signs on whether or not Kevin Durant's going to play. Well, that, that that actually leads us directly to where Stephen A. took us as we were checking in with him, and his reaction last night was talking all about that, all about the supporting cast. One team was big and one team not so at all. When Golden State doubled Kawhi Leonard, other guys stepped up. When the Toronto Raptors doubled Steph Curry, virtually no one stepped up. Klay Thompson may have had 21 points, may have hit 8 or 17 shots and what have you, but where was anybody else? If you're the Golden State Warriors, somebody has to step up on the offensive side of the ball and help out Steph and Klay. Give me about 15 points, whether you're Iguodala, you're Livingston, you're Looney, anybody that you can find. Give me something offensively. So you heard him going through the names there, whether you're Iguodala, you're Livingston, you're Looney. Like, who, who's going to do it? Who, who, That's who, right. Well, with all due respect to everybody that he just mentioned, like who's really going to do that? What, what, Alfonso Ken, like McKinney? Well, I, I don't want to talk as much if we're going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about offense. So somebody not, definitely needs to step up for the Warriors, but – I think they need to play better defense. Like, that's where the Warriors, people forget that the Warriors have been a top three defensive team the last, during this five-year stretch of dominance. They've been a high-level defensive team, very similar to what Toronto is doing right now. But you're, like, obviously you're missing guys and guys are hobbled. But if you're going to give up 50% from the field and 40% from three on the road, you're not going to win many games. So if their focus needs to be more on the defensive I, end than on the offensive end. I, I hear you, but you know, last night you're sitting behind the bench and I'm watching him. I see Andre Iguodala say to Steve Kerr, like, my knees seem like they shot. They seem yeah. like they're shot. Yeah. All right, so if you're taking Andre Iguodala out of the, the picture, Kevon Looney, yeah. Jordan Bell, Quinn Cook, Sean Livingston, like, and, these are legitimate names you're saying. Still, you have to give me. And they still scored 108 points. I agree with someone you. on the other side going 14 for 17. I'm not saying that Toronto can't win this series. I think that this is going to be a great series that not a lot of people know which way it's going to go. But what they're going to need to do is they're going to need to make this a more of a defensive series than us trying to outscore you. And the, the other factor in this is we try and figure out where else Golden State can go for offense is, I guess, that guy that we're seeing on the screen. In this moment, he's playing D. <laughs> But they, do they need this? It they do. Was what we saw last night an indication that as great as they were against Portland, that they need Kevin Durant to win this? This series? ain't Portland, and, and, and this ain't Houston. This is a well-balanced team with a stud, a future star, and a great defensive like team. And they have lots of guys that have played against the Warriors before. That's one thing that I will say playing against them in the regular season and then all of a sudden in the finals. If you don't see anything like the Warriors, you have no experience. But then all of a sudden, like again, we said this, Danny Green, you have Serge Ibaka and Kawhi Leonard understand the intensity that it takes to play against this Warriors team. I'm just going to ask you as directly as it can be asked. Yes. Can the Warriors win this series if Durant does not play a minute? I picked Toronto on seven. Yeah. Oh, here what, what do you mean here we go? I said it here, yesterday. Here we go. I picked Toronto on seven if Kev, Kevin Durant doesn't play. I, I think something else that people are looking over, the energy in that building last night was insane. I'm not saying it was is better than Oracle because Oracle's crazy too. 
But like, let's not forget, this is the first time this team is having their first NBA Finals experience on the road. On the road. And under Steve Kerr, in the Finals, on the road, they're 6-5. and five. They're 6-5. and five. Yeah. So this is new territory for them to feel out as well. Yeah, no, and, they, and there's a lot of bodies that haven't really experienced this. Yeah, so yeah, Quinn Cook and all of these guys. Some of these guys might have championships. Looney might have championships, but they're in a very different role. You're asking Steph to go back and play a 73-win style basketball. You're asking Clay to do that. Draymond, they're like, fine. But now you're asking Looney and McKinney to go out there and, like, we need you to score. We're going to ask you to do a role that you have never done before. And I think when you look at that, it becomes a little bit more difficult for these guys. Yeah, here's a bunch of, of guys in the supporting camp cast not knocking down shots last night and some of that is on the road and some of that could be a little bit of rust and look there's no cause for any panic no. it was an amazing statistic this is the fifth time under Steve Kerr that Golden State has trailed in a playoff series they won the previous four <laughs> the only time they ever lost a playoff series you guys beat them in a game seven in a mm. series in which you never led never. until it was actually over so look they've come from behind before I don't think there's any reason or reason to believe that they will panic but if, if you needed some indication, if there were anyone out there that was sort of a doubter and needed an indication that the Raptors are absolutely capable of fighting this team toe-to-toe, I think last night we saw it. There's also a stat that said this team, the team that wins game one in the NBA Finals wins the series 71% of the time. That's a good stat. I, I don't, 71% I'm not, I'm not really of the time. I'm stats and numbers. But I'm just saying, and if you're Toronto, if you don't get game one, then it would have been, oh, it it would have been over. But well, you no got to get game and one. And no one was saying this was ever going to be a sweep. So I, I, I think we're right where I think everyone believes this series is going to go. The only person who said that. Dan Orlovsky <laughs> sitting right there, which means from now Dan, on, you're not he is limited not, no more. to football you conversation can. only. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk to him about quarterbacks and nothing else. All right, let me get up and go here and catch you up on some of the other things that happened in the world of sports yesterday. It begins with Tiger Woods. Open with a two under 70 in the first round of the Memorial yesterday, coming off missing the cut at the PJ. He finished strong. He had three birdies and a bogey over his last five holes. This is a golf course where he tends to play well. Ryan Moore, by the way, is your leader shooting an opening round 65, but it was a perfectly reasonable good start for Tiger Woods yesterday. Meanwhile, news from the NBA as we get up and go. Mike D'Antoni confirming he has ended talks with Rockets management on a contract extension. He'll go into the final year of his deal. Is that a big deal, RJ? I think it's a big deal. I think this is how you see a normal normal dysfunction in an organization, right? We don't want to discuss La La Land. This is normal. You got assistant coaches being fired, everybody talking about you're going to trade, the the, uh, the entire team is up for a trade, and you have the head coach that has been doing a great job, although there's been some gaps, now in a spot where he's not going to get an extension. Hard to win in that system when your best player doesn't really buy into it all the time. Ooh. We'll see if this is D'Antoni's last year and just how many changes they make in Houston. Meanwhile, we get up and go to college basketball. Michigan formally introducing a Michigan man, Juwan Howard, as their new basketball coach yesterday. Howard will join us live an hour from now. Was very emotional at the news conference. I said I was gonna cry. Great emotion from him. Jay Will, what do you make of this yesterday? I, I think it was great for basketball. I think bringing the culture back to Ann Arbor. And I didn't mean the winning culture because John Beeline did a great job of that, but they have not had one McDonald's All American. For the longest time, I think Juwan Howard can go into those types of environments and bring those type of players to Michigan with that kind of swag. Well, a reminder, at 10 after 9 Eastern this morning, so basically 50, 5 minutes from right now, two members of the Fab Five will be united live on our air. Jalen will interview Juwan Howard. Ah, yeah, the cabbage hey. fan. Hit him with the cabbage fan. We look forward to that. Again, those guys will be together. Jalen, Juwan, we will talk about everything the coming ball, up a little Jaylen. after 9 this morning. Meanwhile, on planet Earth, script. National Spelling Bee. Final score yesterday, kids eight, dictionary zero. There were eight spellers still alive entering the final round last night, and then you this happened. Correct. You are 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 correct. Correct. You are correct. You are correct. Congratulations. 
All eight of them, all eight of these kids got their final word right, and they were all declared co-champions. What? What? Each, they ran out of words. No. Everybody hey. gets a trophy. Hey, hey, here we go. You know what I want? I want there to be eight NBA champions this year. No. That's what I want. You're missing the point. I'm not missing a there point. There were no words left in the English language. There are words. You just got to make on, some Greeny. up. Everybody gets a trophy. Make some up. We can't Go. do this to these kids. Like, let's, let's combine a word that doesn't exist, like Knicks win or something. <laughs> <laughs> let's, like, just, <laughs> let's combine <laughs> words. Let's take a break. <laughs> Let's combine How words that don't exist. How about if we ask the kids to spell <laughs> Raptor Rapture? Because coming up, it was a great night in Toronto. We'll explain how Toronto stifled the Warriors' offense and silenced their critics in the process. And if you thought Drake was going to avoid the spotlight,